Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, either back or for the first time. Now, today I am going to be giving my thoughts on Halo Infinite, a game I just recently wrapped over on my uh, gaming channel, Sod Passion Gaming. Did a full playthrough of the story campaign there, and yeah, like I said, talking about it. Also, after I finished up the uh, story, I went and did, uh, finished off a good chunk of the side stuff. Because, like, at that point, I had done a few of it on a few bits and bobs on stream. And, like, uh, I, I will say this my two favorite vehicles in the game are the Ghost. Uh, the <laughs> Ghost. <laughs> I got the notepad back. Been a while since we've seen that. Anyhow, the Ghost and the Wasp. You, uh, something you unlock in the game. Uh, Relatively late into it by accruing a valor, which you get from doing like main story missions and side things where you rescue uh, groups of, uh, well, not uh, groups of soldiers, you know, they need you help. Anyhow, unrelated. Gonna go over my main thoughts here. I got some bouncing between them roughly, but I've got it basically down to. What's up, my pros? We'll go into those first. Some nitpicks we'll cover and tie them into the main cons I have them afterwards. And then at the very end, we're going to get into the thing that I'm going to tempt you on in with the thumbnail. I have yet to make it, but I have a firm idea of what it's going to be. So, starting off, I this is pretty much expected from uh, Halo at this point. The gameplay, pretty solid overall. I mean, there's some core design issues with some things, but in terms of, you know, engaging with the enemy, fighting them, shooting them, moving about, and all that good stuff, it is pretty much what you'd expect from a Halo game. Pretty damn good. It was very satisfying to play, and I had a wonderful time with it. Engaging the normal enemies. Come back to that later. I mean, I, I want to say more, you know? I feel like that hits it on nail, uh, the nail on the head pretty firmly there. Pretty satisfying to play. Not only because of the gameplay, but because a lot of the character work between the uh, main cast of characters. And when it comes to like going off into the villains, it's, eh, you know. Alright, I feel like it's more setting up for something, you know, so... Uh, I'll cover this con right now, kind of working as a retcon story in that regards, because, like, I, I, not the, a massive Halo head. I think I may have played one of the previous entries at some point when I was way younger, but for all intents and purposes, this is my first serious boy into the uh, Halo franchise, but I do know enough that, you know, I, What's it? I knew that uh, shipping uh, Master Chief and Cortana was a thing. I knew they were partners before. In this, it is very much presented as a past tense sort of thing. Oh, spoilers, I should have said. Spoilers overall for this review, so be warned. Anywho. And I think you know, some people might not have been happy with it. And it seems like one of the major goals of this story was to retcon it. And, you know... At the end of the day, when you're th through the campaign and you realize that, it's like, that is kind of a blow against it, you know? I kind of just, I understand in a popular decision of wanting to, you know, respond to feedback to an extent, but also at the same time, you have to make your bed and lie in it. Like, maybe, like, instead of just, like, completely reversing it, you do things like, I don't know, make Cortana a more sympathetic villain, you know? Where you can relate and understand to, and like Master Chief just is on the side of the uh, what's it, USNC, I want to say. I can't remember off the top of my head. He's on their side, loyal to that cause overall, because he was, again, spoilers from like past games where I've no other lord, kind of like bred and made to do that, so he's just always going to follow that, whereas Katana has gone off her own path and is still the villain, the antagonist, but that doesn't always necessarily mean they have to be morally wrong. And, you know, war can often be quite a grey subject. You know, no clear rights or wrongs in certain instances, but, um, no, just, just, uh, blows up planet. 
gets consequences for it dead at a certain point. We also find out when what's it uh one of the military final bosses. There's two final bosses, I'll say. One for the military stuff, one for the hard sci-fi stuff. But at that point, surprise, the boss in a Halo game is dead. So, but we get revealed this information after Cortana has died. And also, like, a lot of the serious stuff that involves the big bad. I, I, don't ask me for his name. I have not bothered to learn it at all. Just could not tune it out every single time. Every single time. I refuse to absorb that information. I simply referred to him as a theater kid. Now, where was I? Yeah, he's dead by that point. We learn all of this information. So it's like not very impactful. But anyhow, before I go any further into cons here, yeah, let's talk about the stuff I did like. I This game really did uh, sell me on a Master Chief as a character. They did a wonderful job as portraying him as uh, stoic and not as experienced socially, but not completely devoid of emotional intelligence, you know? It's a very good representation of someone being stoic as opposed to just emotionless, and I really did appreciate and enjoy it. It really did... Like, for my first, for a first foray into the Halo franchise, if you want to know if you're going to like Master Chief or not, this is a great game to try. Or at least a great game to win you over to Master Chief. Uh, other characters, um, what's it, there's Weapon, who, uh, again, a T TLDR, spoilers as well, is basically a Cortana clone who has not been informed of this, it's basically, uh, okay, we're going to take the blueprints of you, you know, build up to the end, but uh, strip you of any, like, crucial detail to how you developed at the stage, you know, and use you to help destroy Cortana. And it's like, I, again, it's, on that aspect, it is a bit of a struggle, but, eh, I, I, I don't know, man, it's like, I care about the story. I don't know how much any other people will, you know, and just want to have a fun time in this, like, hard sci-fi world, being a soldier, having to save humanity. That also serves as, like, a, in, a very, very in-depth tutorial and training guide, or uh, training regimen, for the online uh, multiplayer. But yeah, that kind of fit. The whole clone thing... Uh, AI clone thing kind of filled into that retcon feeling of the story once this all became further and further informed. There's also a, a pilot who is uh, serving as a, a primary character in this, again, who uh, interacts with uh, Master Chief in the scene. That led me to say the facts I said previously. It just was a very good representation of what's it. A still a character who can still empathize with people and... Uh, Honestly, it was one of the highlights of the game. You know, them just, like, talking. What's it, this guy? Just uh, what we come to find out eventually. Just a civilian who's been flying us about and hoping for a way out of all this uh, chaos. is just his wit's end, and uh, Master Chief is just understanding that. He is not... Uh, he was never asked to do this, nor, like, trained how to maintain himself in these kind of environments. He was just a civilian contractor. And he emphasizes with him and uh, acts as a you know, rock for him to lean on to uh, pick himself back up. It is a very wonderful scene. And it's something that honestly does make me love this game on the whole, despite uh, some other stuff I will be getting into later. But hey, I think that's time to move on to some other things. Hmm. Uh, character building is very important, and a lot of games do like to do this with audio logs, but like, I have to stress this enough for something that, like, again, also going again to one of my major cons, like, you would think, based on the premise of the story, stranded Master Chief having to crawl back from, like, uh, what's it, near utter defeat after being out of the game for a few months, it's like, not a lot of guerrilla warfare, and also not a lot of interaction with anyone else outside of Weapon and, uh, God, was it Echo something? Uh, 
we learn his name, but it's like at the very end of the game, so I don't want to actually spoil that. So we'll just we'll, we'll just assume it's Echo and work off of that. Anywho, not just not a lot of uh, people like established characters to interact with as you go through the mission. Uh, through the missions, it's almost exclusively on just like hunting down like the military big bad and also dealing with hard sci-fi stuff. It would have been nice for a few missions to focus around like reestablishing. The um, USNC, I want to say, or UNSC, one of the two, establishing their presence and building back up like the infrastructure, the lo supply lines, logistical command structures. Just reestablishing all that would have been neat, but now we don't really get any of that. All we get is like some audio logs that either like take uh, inform us of like events happening before the very beginning of the game characters that are all dead there's a few a few with what's it uh, the bad guy ones you know uh, that do uh, humanize them a little bit but also a lot of them are just like the big bad just you know being the big bad and I had kind of written him off as a theater kid at that point so you know I j it wasn't great. I guess I understood him a little more, but like some games, I really do defend them. The Arkham games, perfect example of having audio logs in there, because you really do get a deeper sense of a character and some fun interactions uh, between, again, like um, the Doctor in what's it? I can't remember her name right now. Uh, in Asylum, Doctor Strange. Uh, Hugo Strange, I want to say. No, that can't be right. No, I'm thinking... I'm mistaking his name, but... Uh, the Doctor, the one that has a Batman complex. Like, those are some good interactions as well. And we just uh, get some, like... Uh, what's it? Spied upon uh, snippets and interactions. As well as, like... Uh, Genesis Quo. Just uh, some more characters interacting that were... Uh, flesh out the world a little bit more. That's a great example of it. This game, honestly, you'd, you would have been better like saving the time and just not recording them. I, I barely felt anything for any of them. I was tuning them out for a good part, even playing them whilst I was like, yo, engaging in combat. Just nothing was really sticking with me. It was all very samey as well. So it's like, meh. I should probably be checking these off, but uh, my pen is just slightly out of reach, so I don't want to bend off of screen. I also got to remember to keep my head back so it doesn't look like I'm looking down all the time. It's The camera's kind of elevated a little bit, so it's like, ooh, yay. <laughs> I forgot about that. Now it's about to here, but angled down, so... Anywho. Oh, uh, ADHD. I'm, I'm really looking into getting medication for that. So, yes. What should I go on to? Also, yeah, like I said, lack of good warfare elements. There's huge swaths of the map that are just, like, for the most part, incredibly empty. Like, I don't know, maybe there's a... I'll get into that later, but... Uh, yeah, there's, like, a... At the very starting area of the game, right next to it, there's, like, one bounty you have to hunt, you know, high-value target to track down and take care of. But for the most part, it's just completely empty. It has enemies there, but there's nothing of purpose to go there. You know, fobs, which are for opposing operating bases, bases where you get uh, your vehicles, your fast travel to, you get your weapon uh, variants, all that good stuff. But, like, there's nothing of that there. No collectibles or anything else that matter. And then there's other segments of the uh, map. Uh, like, towards one of the end game locations... Uh, uh, do, 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 the House of Reckoning. It's like, to either side of the main path there that you'll be following, it's like, not out there. This is a huge thing, like, one that's showing off, like, a lake or something. That, but I have no reason to ever go there. Like, it, it's a waste. And I'm sure I could go there and walk about it. Who knows? Maybe they were saving it for DLC. That may or may not come. I have no idea how old this game is at this point. And also the... Uh, online multiplayer, from what I hear, is struggling in the season two, so I wouldn't hold my breath on that. But yeah, just 
huge swath of the maps just felt so empty. And then, like, late game, when I had the Wasp, to, which was just the easiest thing to summon and then get to the, all the collectibles, I was wrapping up. A uh, brief side note. There was uh, some... Uh, what's it? Uh, no, actually, I'll save that to when I'm talking about it. It's most important there. Yeah, running about, collecting all the things, which... You know, some of the, a lot of them I was just getting, like, diamond achievements for. Less than 10% of people completed them. What's it? Uh, the, the game would just randomly spawn. Like, two people in Banshees, the Wasp... Eh, not exactly equivalent, but not exactly less than... Just a, a flying What's It vehicle that the enemies have. Just out of nowhere. Nowhere at all. And then I move like five feet in the direction and they're just out there. Out of thin air shooting at me. And it just kind of made the late game incredibly tedious and frustrating. Especially because they have pretty good like turning and handling compared to the Wasp. Which just doesn't. It doesn't have any speed boost or hard turn. It's basically like a hover jet, you know. And it's got good weapons on it, but it's like... The Banshees just kind of come up on you too quickly and then can turn around and you can't turn fast enough to keep track of them. Take some multiple rockets to get them, etc. It just made that so frustrating. And again, I just wanted to collect the things at the end of the game, you know? Where was I? Uh, speaking of... Hmm... I will say for end of the game, where was I? Do, do, do. Uh, God, no, what was this? Did I forget to write it down? I must have. There's a, a few sets of collectibles as well that are not marked on the map whenever you acquire a hub. Uh, uh, what's a, a, no, a fob. You get all that, you know, all around you, except for like... Two very specific types of things, basically rings that give you, like, probably the most engaging audio logs in the game that would give you more details about, like, the lore of this specific uh, Halo ring. I believe it was called Zeta. But, like, you're not really introduced to that at all, naturally. And also skulls, which provide, like, um, modifications to the game, such as, like, making rare voice lines, what's it more common, or removing cooldown from equipment. But, like, yeah, no indication at all are there, and it's like, they do not appear on the map unless you directly come across one. And I don't know, like, it, it just, like, hurts the discoverability and my desire to engage with it. Like, I went through all of that before, like, near the end of my collection spree, I had noticed one of those rings and found a skull, and at that, that point I was just checked out on getting them. I can understand wanting the mystery there to an extent, but I, I feel like it would have been a better call to have uh, them appear marked on the map after you completed the main story. You know, just have some line there about like, um, oh yes, I was able to get some information during the final boss battle about the, uh, these rings here and like these skulls darted across the map. I have no idea what they're about, but we should probably check them out. That would have been perfect, you know? You can hunt them down before you reach the end game if you come across them and notice them. And if not, like, you know about their existence after you've completed everything else in the game. It wasn't for some chance encounters and me being observant on the way to collect a little other thing. Uh, what's it, a skin or something? I don't know, I just... They were right next to each other, you know? There was a bunch of stuff next to each other, so I was just going for everything. Like, if I had not gone to that specific one, you know, and come across this ring, if I just decided, nah, I don't care about these, I would have never known about this. And it's kind of frustrating, you know? It's somewhat significant, especially the skulls that add modifiers that are pretty useful or cool. Anywho, um... Other things are annoying. The game relies a little bit too much on fetch quests, you know? Just a few, again, this is kind of why I wanted a few more things, like rebuilding the um, the military, you know, operations in this game. Besides just going after the guy and, you know, do, dealing with the hard sci-fi stuff and making sure Cortana is actually dead. 
It's like, I just, I needed that variety and it wasn't there. And I, especially towards, I thought at one point I was like at the end of the game. I was at my final stream of it. Uh, speaking of which, I will have a link to the playlist down below. Yeah, I thought I was about to end it at like six episodes, but it went to seven because one of the fetch quests, which is so absurdly long r about just running between different installations on one section of the map and collecting bits of code to then be able to progress. But those, they were so far spread out from each other and were like fairly well guarded every time. That just took so long to get through. It was not engaging or like super fun. I thought I would be done with that in like 40 minutes, but it did take quite a while. Uh, anywho, let's make sure at least we wrap up all the nitpicks before we start going heavily into the cons. And oh, look at that, we're at 20 minutes. Yay, probably should stop rushing through this. Oh yeah, bad checkpoints for bosses. Like there's one of the, uh, what's the final bosses? I got so frustrated. You can see that on the playlist. What's it? Um, eventually he gets down to this like uh, hammer stage. Where he just does a lot of damage to you. Uh, what's it? Genesequa. Just constantly running on top of you. Doing a lot of damage. And it's like whenever he kills you. Like uh, instead of like uh, checkpointing to that stage of the fight. And continuing on from there and retrying. You have to do entire like... Uh, uh, before stage, what's it, uh, preceding stage, we'll say, because it's more of a proper sentence, where you have to, like, slowly whittle down his health, and he brings up the shield that does stuff, won't go into it here, so you gotta break the fuse, but then you also have to wait for, like, a weapon to tell you about all this, and then reveal it, and also not die during all of this, and it is so frustrating. <laughs> it's so... F just let me try again from the hammer stage, please. I swear, I it could have, the last stream could have been done in like two hours tops. It went out on for like three and a half or more. Just because it took so long to get like these two final bosses. Because of the checkpointing. It did it put all like this arbitrary busy work in front of like this stage you have to try again. And you have to get through all of that. And it was just so frustrating. Now let's see. Point in time, empty flying enemies, we got that. Fetch quest, we got that. I, I believe I also did cover this. Uh, annoying bosses. There was also a, a complaint about the kind of low health, but I didn't realize. Uh, basically, there's various ability things to equip in there, and I just assumed like one of them was also, okay, you equip this, and then you get like a burst of shield, the health, or whatnot. No, it was just like better health, you know? And I could have been upgrading that the entire time. Turns out I had completely overlooked that. Oh well. Oh well. But it does stand true. The bosses are very annoying. They come up right on top of you a lot of the time. Doing melee attacks. If not uh, at the beginning, they will eventually revert to that. And it becomes so frustrating. And they keep saying the same lines of uh, what's the dialogue over and over again. Like, at some points, I had to, like, just mute the voice volume altogether just to get through a segment because I was getting so annoyed. <laughs> it's like, the whole game, you're like, uh, okay, yeah, let's just um, shoot you, shoot you, grapple to you, melee you, melee you, shoot you, grapple again, melee. And it's very satisfying and engaging, but then it's like this one guy that's constantly running up on top of you, doing insane damage with a melee weapon. And you're just trying not to die and find, like, explosive barrels to throw at him, keep shooting at him. Stuns don't work against these guys, so you have to live with that. Uh, it was... Compared to, like, the standard combat, it was so much worse. And such a turnoff compared to, like, everything else in the game that I was, like, really enjoying. Like, a boss, it can be challenging, but at the certain point... It should be, once you defeat it, you should be happy to have succeeded the challenge, as opposed to having a sensation of, oh god, I never, thank god, I never have to do this again. Like, it's a fine line to balance, uh, uh, not to balance, to walk, but, like, I don't think they quite manage it, unfortunately, to the game's detriment. Now, what else, what else? 
retcon. So I, I already went over that. Lack of little over. Hit that. Mortar and electric weapons. They are some of the most annoying things in this game. Basically, it's a handheld mortar that just kind of curves shots, does a lot of damage, focuses on you way too well, and also it allows it to ignore cover to a certain extent, which just becomes even more frustrating. And of course, it is in the hand of roots, which, you know, take a lot of uh, what's it, bullets, especially when they are the armored variety. And they typically are when they have the mortars. The other ones, electric weapons, like slowly do damage over time, which is kind of annoying. But for the most part, what frustrates me is that they can stun vehicles that you're in. This became incredibly frustrating alongside the Banshees in the late game where I was just trying to hoover up everything I could find. I, it just, oh god, it's frustrated me to no end. Just be using this thing I've got in the late game. I had to do a lot of stuff to unlock. And then it's like, oh, I'm falling to the ground and also getting shot and can't avoid it because I'm stunned. Yay. Ugh. What's it? Oh, draw distance. This is something that really breaks my heart, especially as you're going in this. Like, it's a problem of having to make sure everything is compatible with, like, last gen. At this point now, like, two years into the... God, when was it? Oh, two years, a year in, what's it, to um, this current gen of gaming. It's just... I don't feel like... In order to make the game work on both systems, to a reasonable extent, like, sacrifices had to be made, including, like, a draw distance mechanic that has things constantly popping in if you're at, like, a high enough ele elevation with any, like, flying vehicles. And it looks really bad, you know? Like, to an extent, they try and mask this with, like, the different elevations. You know, rocky terrain that also has, like, uh, the artificial bits of the halo ring jutting out out of it. Because this segment of it has been damaged. So, you know. They do a good job of masking it that way. But it's like... I don't... They don't have to be, like, super detailed from a distance, but for... Love of God, please, I don't want to see the tree, uh, the forest line popping in as I progress closer towards it. I kind of want it to be there, you know, maybe in like a very like low uh, polygon way, but it's like at least have it be there as opposed to popping in. Ugh. Like once you have a certain altitude, it doesn't have to look super realistic until I'm close to it, but like. The same tricks that work in every other environment, especially because, again, it was in this one uh, area that only had the one bounty. The only way I could get to that was with that late game ve vehicle, so this was the way I was going to encounter this. I just... It was incredibly frustrating. Yeah, it's also a problem with Elden Ring as well, It, but kind of worse there, because it's like... As opposed to like, oh, I'm in a flying vehicle that's kind of breaking the... Uh, things they put in there to block the line of sight to then have things load in and out. It's just like, you go 20 feet forward. Oh, here's grass that wasn't there a second ago that you would have clearly seen. Oh, well. Oh, well. Let's see. Double checking. Oh, God. I, I missed this one. Uh, weapon. I like her well enough. She has good interactions with Master Chief, you know. Has some good moral ethical questions about like, hey, you tried to delete me here because you thought I was going to go rogue. I am just a copy of somebody else who could go on to perform genocidal actions. Oh my god. That's neat. That's very good. What I hate is when I'm doing like trying to rescue a squadron, killing out one of the side uh, objectives that are basically like, you know... Crushing the enemy's line of support, whether it be supply depots or excavation sites, just getting rid of those. And she's constantly like, as soon as, as soon, the millisecond I'm done with that, you know? Or oh, I'm traveling to another one with a waypoint on it. It's like, hey, remember the story mission? It'd be super neat if we did the story mission, wouldn't it? And it's just... It wouldn't be bad if it was just like, okay, I loaded into it. Oh, yeah, I, there's a story mission I have to do. I can't, might have forgot about that, you know, from the last play session. 
it's constant. It's so much. They need to tone that down a great deal. It is near insufferable. Okay. Like a girl, that can say, fetch quest, got that, empty map, but do, but do, yep. Well, that just brings us to the last thing. The big change this game needs to do its best to patch in, as opposed to just leaving it its current state, that I firmly believe, well, you know, not done in the afternoon, is not a ton of work to get uh, into the game, and would also make it substantially better and more engaging, and just a lot more fun. It's instead of having the selection system for, you know, the uh, equipments you have, basically grapple shot, thruster packs, shield wall, and a threat sensor you can throw down, is um, minimize, just tie the threat sensor in to what's it, uh, tie them all into active buttons instead of having to swap them about. Threat sensor, you normally have a sensor in the game anyhow. It was kind of weird in the late game just seeing weapons pop up that were on the ground, but I couldn't highlight enemies. Just tie it into that, and if there needs to be something for like the invisible enemies on the ground to justify scanning them, it can be holding down that button to activate the prompt to shoot one of them out. Selection button for like all of those things can then just be what you use to like either instantly drop or then selection and then throw out. Uh, what's it, um, the shield wall, and what's it, the thrusters can be tied to the A button after you jump. Typically, like, uh, it's kind of the meme with Halo, you're kind of just jumping to dodge fire, so jumping and then thrusting to get, <laughs> phrasing, to get out of line of sight, and especially some, like, late game upgrades, uh, turn invisible, it's, that would be very useful, and then you keep, what's it, the, uh, grappling hook on the, uh, uh right bumper, that is pretty much the activation button right now. Like, it would be such a massive improvement to the quality of this game. And I firmly believe it could be done without an inordinate amount of work on the part of developers. And, like, there's good law reasons for, like, why, what's it? Uh, Master Chief could do all of these at once, whereas, like, other Spartans couldn't. And it could just be a matter of the resources they have. Again, humanity's kind of on the back foot a little bit in the Halo franchise, from what I understand. So they may only have a limited stockpile that they need to keep uh, at a certain level to replace equipment as it's damaged or broken or lost in battle. And again, Master Chief takes all his stuff off of people who are already, you know, dead. He just doesn't uh, commandeer it. So it's like, it's a good in-universe explanation for why he's able to use all of these any of them could but just so they have a diversity of tactics you know and all reasonably equipped uh, they kind of spread out what they all have it would be it's a perfect in-universe explanation and like having all those things would make the game so much engage more engaging and so much more dynamic being able to Create your own cover, dash about the place, you know, just highlighting enemies for when you're down to the last couple of few and you need to find out where that straggle is to complete an objective. It would be so much more useful. And the worst part is, is like on a base level, the grappling one is so much more useful because it brings you to the enemies. You get to do the melee thing, which is powerful. You get a stun foot and it has one of the fastest cooldowns in the game. So of course you always want to default to that. And it's to such an extent, remember what I was saying about diamond achievements? Not only was it like a diamond, ah, God, a diamond achievement to fully upgrade all of them, implying like, except for the grappling one, implying, you know, people weren't using it to that extent or like just didn't want to upgrade them. Which again, having them all be active at any time kind of incentivizes you to do that. Just using them 50 times, which also has an achievement, is also a diamond achievement. Meaning less than 10% uh, of the people who played the game did not use anything outside of the grapple 50 times. Which, yeah, given how early I popped that achievement for the grapple, you know, and how early I popped the achievement for it to be fully leveled up, leveled up 
very early into the game because it was super useful. Like, that is a ringing indictment against the design of this game, having it be a roster you select between. Also, it's kind of bad because you also have that same roster between grenades and if you hit the wrong side, left or right. Which, being dyslexic, I kind of mix those up all the time, so yay. Like, I have to wait for that wheel that then lets me select on the D-pad what grenade I'll use to then select the gadget or vice versa. It, just having only one wheel pop up would be a lot neater. But, like, again, less than 10% of the people are engaging with anything outside of the grappling hook, despite the fact that there's clear use and benefit to these things, they just pale in comparison to the effectiveness of the grapple hook. I cannot stress enough, stunning enemies coming up and hitting them, shooting them, hitting them, and stunning them again to then hit them is a very effective combo to kill. Uh, your basic brutes that don't have a lot of armor, and what's it? Stunning and meleeing kills everything else in one go, except for, like, elites. It's... I implore the developers, if anyone sees this, please fight for this. I I honestly believe this will make the game infinitely better. It would be so much more engaging and get the player familiar with these mechanics in the multiplayer setting where you do have to select only one. Though I, again, have to imagine, at least in that setting as well, the same problem comes about, unless you're dealing with a base uh, requirements for all of these things. Um, yeah, the <laughs> the grappling hook is still going to have the same problem about classing them, but at least in the story campaign, you'll be using all of them fluidly as opposed to just the grappling hook. But yeah, that's just my thoughts on it. And hey, only 36 minutes in, I probably should have sh shouted this out sooner. Well, but better late than never, if you've stuck through all this. Uh, can't edit things right now, because uh, very poor PC completely bricks itself out, works on the edit, can't do anything else, so that's not feasible. Got a, what's it, just a new PC fund here. Donating would be a huge help, ideally appreciate it, find ways to do that in the description. But anywho, what's it? Also huge helps, um, subscribing to not only this channel, but the gaming channel I stream. Huge help liking this video and what it streams and shorts I have over on there would be dearly appreciated. And by the time this does go up, it will, I believe, well... Okay, not just. You could just get in at the tail end of a vote to what will place Halo Infinite, but also there'll be a second uh, vote. Uh, to, for what will place Kina Bridge of Spirits, a game I'm also rapidly close to finishing. So do join my Discord server to uh, in, uh, vote on those things and also suggest some games as well. Probably will be too late for what's it, the uh, Halo replacement. But the Kina Bridge of Spirits, you'll be just in time to start uh, suggesting games for that. Now, anything else? I did the subscribe thing that... Yeah, no, that's about everything, I believe. Kind of forgetful, should have called these out earlier. But anyhow, again, thank you very much for sticking with me through all of this. I dearly appreciate it. Sincerely, it does mean the world to me. Now, it is time to say, ta-ta, Vida Zane, until we meet again. Bye bye And now I have to awkwardly end the recording and just upload it with this up there. I hope you enjoy. Leave leave a comment about how awkward this is. It helps the video. Okay, for reals now. Bye. As soon as I hit this stop recording button. Yeah. Oh, confirmation for it. So, yes.